Hello, people of the web and YouTube. The Big welcome back to Hack Time. Whoa. So, okay, guys, don't get me wrong. Even though I have this video probably listed as part one in my three part button box project, I do, however, got a button box well built. The main reason why I called this a part one, though, is I plan on building three of these different button boxes, but they're all gonna be powered by the same Otterino, a Otterino Pro Micro. But since I didn't really have much experience with the Otterino Pro Micro lineup, I decided to build a small little test button box comprising of four, well, push buttons. And with that said, overall, it worked out pretty good. At first, it didn't really work because I flashed it wrong, and by flashing it wrong, do not upload code to this and accidentally unplug the cord, okay? I learned my lesson the hard way, and it ended up damaging the, the device pretty good, I think. Either that or it was damaged in shipping, I don't really know, but it couldn't connect really much after that, but once I got it connected again, this board has a lot more pros than it does cons, because compared to the DigiSpark, this thing has a 16 megahertz well clock speed, meaning it could actually type way faster than the DigiSpark, and it's probably more or less on par with a USB rubber ducky in my opinion. But yeah, Arduino clock speeds and things are another subject entirely for another video. Today, I'm just going to be talking about how I put this together to my, well, wiring diagram that I am showing here on screen. Overall, it was pretty simple. All you really got to do is short one lead from your button into the pin and from the other lead into the ground. And it's pretty much done from there. If you want to add an LED in as according to my diagram, you can. That indeed does work. The only reason why my current build here doesn't seem to include it is because it was just too much of a hassle to get in there and the LED overall wasn't really that bright. But yeah, let's get back on topic here. This thing was really simple to put together and it, overall it's been really useful and handy. I've been practicing with it in games for the past day and a half as well as when I go to edit videos and I haven't seen any kind of glitches or hiccups and with that said, I will be listing down the code I use for this device in the description as well as the schematic as well as the parts used. That way if you guys want to build this particular, well, button box, you indeed can. Overall, the parts are really cheap and simple, and if you think this case would have costed you a pretty penny, don't get me wrong, it won't. Because this is a $1 phone stand from the dollar store, and unfortunately, no matter what phone I put on it, it didn't fit. But if I had a phone that fat, that fat there, yeah, that fitted there, I would have probably kept the phone charger intact. That way I could charge my phone while using it. But since I couldn't do that, I tried to put an LED there, and obviously that didn't really work. But yeah, overall, this project is straightforward and simple. I got it all built and put together right now. So how about we test it out now, shall we? And if I remember right, the second button here should minimize my desktop. And indeed it does, and if I hit that again, it should bring everything back. And the button next to that one opens a folder up that I normally use a lot, and then clears the run history so that I can run something else there in the future without having to worry about code being here in the run window. But yeah, then the other two buttons do exactly what you expect them to do. The last one opens up, well my virtual computer, aka Kali Linux, and it does it pretty remarkably fast, believe it or not. I actually prefer to open Kali Linux up now with my macro than to actually go and find Oracle VirtualBox, open it, and then hit run. It works way better. And speaking of the final button now, the final button just logs off my computer, and I don't really plan on doing that right now. But yeah guys, that's pretty much it for today's video, like I said, and as I said previously, I will be linking everything you need to know and or to have in order to replicate this project for yourself down below in the description. Just know before getting into this, compared to other Arduino boards, this thing can be a bastard to program, okay? But once you got it programmed and set up, it's pretty awesome to use. You don't ever have to unplug it from your computer in order to change the code I found out. So if you want to go from video editing right to gaming, all you got to do is open up the Arduino IDE with whatever script you want your, well, 
macro to run and just hit upload and it's on there. Like I could switch this over right now to FSX mode if I wanted to, just like that. But yeah guys, like I said, this is pretty much it for the video and I'm gonna leave it off here. DTPK signing off. Peace. Thing, it doesn't really match my whole computer setup so I'm probably gonna undo the blue cord. But essentially what this does is it saves your icon position to a file and you can specify